So now let's create the function from scratch. No code at all. Well, we have an example here, but remember, when you are calling a function, you say, for example, add numbers. I want to add a, a couple of numbers, so 2 and 5. That's how you call a function. When you declare it, you also have to add some additional things. Like you have to remove the semicolon and you have to put function at the beginning. And then you have to put the scope of a function with these curly brackets. And last, you would return something. Let me return null right now, but you have to always remember to return. It really matters. And the values should be replaced with variables. It's not a great idea to call them a and b. This one is because it's a very simple function. But normally, when a function is a little bit more complicated, a and b is not a really good name for variables. They should always uh, try to express on their name what they're going to have inside. So a and b will not be a good idea. It could be number one and number two because we're having a math function. This is a function that sums two numbers. So, But if your function doesn't do that, like if your function calculates the price of a bill in a hospital then and you're receiving the amount of treatments, it should say treatments, treatments, amount. So that you know that it's the amount of treatments, what comes inside, and you will start making assumptions on it. And that's good because you're going to understand the code better. But if I say A and that's the amount of treatments, then how on earth I would know that? I would not know that. I would have to start console logging the variable and, and debugging, and it will take hours just because the original developer didn't pick the right name. So please pick a good name for your variables. Okay, so here, it's saying that we need to generate a random number, I think. The declare a function called generate random, which generates a random number between 0 and 9. OK, there's a function that is math.random that generates a random number between, I think it's between, let me console log it so that we can see it. Console log math.random, and then let's run it. You see, it's a number between 0 and 1. Like, it will never get past 1. So, with JavaScript, we could multiply that by 10. And then it will be a number between 0 and 9 now, because I moved the comma a little bit. And then I, I can apply a math a math.floor that will basically remove the decimals from it. So now it's a number from 0 to 9. You see? From 0 to 9, because I applied some math to it. That This is all the math that you're going to be using when you code in a web development world. So don't get afraid about math, because it's never going to be a problem, unless you want to specialize in, in more advanced things. So that's our function. Let's test it. Maybe I have to console log something, so I don't remember. Nope, I don't have to console log something. So let's cross fingers here that it's right. It is not. I, I need to console log it. OK. So I need to call it. So console log. And by the way, it doesn't need A at all. It doesn't need any parameters. So console log this too. Let's test it again. Yeah, everything is fine. 